Hi Taylor, this is your grandma, Grandma Morris. Neil Price. Do the lens thing. Take four. My name is Riley Morris and Taylor is my brother. Hello. Yo. Hey Taylor. Hey Taylor, it's Claire. My name is Elliot Tenson. Hey Taylor, it's Ashley. Hey Taylor, it's Lisa. What up Taylor, Jason. I'm Shahid. I'm Shane Cross. Hi, my name's Tom. I'm Josh. I'm Lamb. My name is Mike DeMarco. My name is Ben Haggerty. I'm Sid, his uh, grandpa. I am Mike Tucson. I'm Tim Dodd. My name is Daniel Twido. My name is Catherine Brand. I'm Josiah Hansen, and I've known Taylor since about fourth grade. So, what is that, 13 years now? I've known Taylor since fifth or sixth grade, playing soccer with him. I've known Taylor since I was real little. It was back when Neil lived by me. Taylor figured that he was going to step in and try to steal my friend. You know, that wasn't really going to happen. So Taylor immediately became my nemesis. It's really funny how quickly that changed when we started playing soccer together. We were constantly looking after each other. And I feel like that's kind of a theme that never really changed. I've known Taylor since seventh grade, first hour. Coach Jonesy's PE class. I met Taylor in a cornfield. I was 14 years old. We were both detasseling. Uh, we we just were car geeks and motorcycle geeks, and we just instantly connected. And I've known Taylor since we were about eight years old, and we joined the same baseball team. Taylor's my best friend. Taylor and I have been together for about seven years now, since the middle of high school, and. He's been nothing but a best friend to me. I've known Taylor for 13 years. Started playing soccer with him when we were young. We've been good friends since elementary school. You were one of my first friends, and I consider you a best friend. Uh, I still remember the first day that I met Taylor. That first night being in the hotel room, I just remember Taylor decided that he was going to strip down every single bed, take the sheets, tie them together to make a long rope tied it to an ironing board, took the ironing board, shoved it against the window, threw the rope down out of the three-story hotel room. He then got out of the window and decided that he was going to rappel down from the third story of the hotel room. I don't even think he really had a plan. And I have known Taylor since we were in junior high. I know Taylor from back in junior high because I had heard a guy was building a hovercraft and I needed to know a guy that was building a hovercraft, so I met Taylor. First met Taylor about five years ago when we all decided to take the same career path. Pretty much been inseparable ever since. Been through some uh, pretty tough times and definitely some good times. I know Taylor through uh, lots of different ways, soccer, running around with friends, going to school together since we were kids. I grew up with Taylor at a young age. The first encounter we had together was recreation soccer team, the Hammerheads, where we both would fight over who got to be the Hammerhead, which was the position that could go all over the field. I know Taylor because we have been best friends for almost uh, 20 years now. Words I would use to describe Taylor? Caring. A caring guy. Very caring. He really cares for people. Caring. Caring. Very caring guy. He never gives up and he's stubborn as shit. Taylor is a beautiful man. Gorgeous. Handsome. He's a badass. Always been some kind of crazy adventure. An adventure. Adventurous. Loyal. Loyal. He's also one of the funniest people you'll ever meet. But you're funny. Brave. He's pretty awesome. We're awesome. Like pretty awesome. Awesome. Strong. Strong. Very strong guy. Crazy. He's full-hearted. An extreme love of life. Capable, charming, confident, courageous, credible, dashing, dazzling, Friendly, delightful, funny, generous, gentle, harmonious, hilarious, tough, honorable, and tough, trustworthy, willing, wise, and witty. Really, Taylor, what I'm trying to get at is you're one hell of a guy. My favorite memory, although I can name many of, of trips to Panama City and South Carolina and Arkansas, of shooting Neil from 30 feet away or sleeping in the same sleeping bag at the uh, precipice of a waterfall or having a vodka chugging contest. My favorite memory of Taylor would have to be, I mean, I can't really pinpoint one. It'd probably just be uh, the whole summer after graduating high school at Becky's house, sitting out on the river, tubing, or hitting golf balls in the river, and all that crazy bonfires and good stories and good times. Trying to pick through a lot of stories with Taylor that aren't completely illegal. This one time he had gotten a new motorcycle and then he's like, hey, I got an extra helmet, let's throw it on, let's go for a ride quick. Of course, I trusted him and was down with it, so we popped on the helmets and we had a kind of a, a system of, you know, we're not going to hug each other, but I'm going to support myself off like the gas tank. He just turned his helmet back and yelled, you got to hold on tight, you got to hug me tight. We just went out kind of out the country by his house. I think he was just trying to see how fast his motorcycle would go, but it wasn't a big deal because his, his Taylor. One humor saying that I will probably never forget. I first heard about it when I heard somebody 
calling the Cricket Man. And uh, when I learned about uh, th that event, I had a lot of good laughs and uh, thought that was rather funny. And, and I probably won't forget that. We were down in Destin, Florida, where we were going through EOD school together. And they got this place called Crab Island. And it's out on the water. It's a big sandbar. It's only like three feet deep water. And there's like hundreds of boats go out there to party and just drink. Water is clear as glass. About up to your waist. It really is an amazing place. It's kind of like heaven. So we were out there and we had been out shark fishing all day. Didn't catch a thing, didn't even see a shark. So we were, we were going back to Crab Island to get our drink on, defeated. Show up there and I uh, realized that I had this like big six foot rubber snake in the boat with me because I carried it everywhere. Taylor came up with a plan that we were going to tie it on the fishing pole, walk it out across all these people. There's probably a couple hundred boats out there. Him and Lamb here, we tied it up. Got a towel, it's wrapped in a towel. Taylor had it slung over his back. Me and him walked together, weaving in and out the boats, a couple hundred yards away, and that's where we made the drop. And there's a little trick we called the swap. That's where I took the towel off Taylor's shoulder, and I did the turn, threw it on my shoulder, and the snake dropped behind us, and we, we walked on back. It was pretty smooth. Nobody saw a thing. So anyways, I started reeling, pulling the snake through, and we had no idea where it was at until we started seeing the reactions. All of a sudden, like this snake must have been coming around this front of this other boat. There was this guy and his must have been his girlfriend, I guess, out in the tubes in front. And this guy lets out this like blood curdling <laughs> scream, pushes her tube under, and she just falls in the water. And he runs away and jumps in the boat. She gets up screaming and runs over to him and is like slapping him. At this point, we pretty much have the attention of everybody on Crab Island. Everyone's pointing and like yawn. Oh my god, it's a snake. Oh my god. At this point, the snake's like coming through, and now it's out in this big wide open area that's in front of us. And the only thing it has to do now is go straight to our boat. And I mean, there's a couple hundred people staring at the snake, so we knew that we couldn't really just. It's just this huge ring of people looking at the snake. We really couldn't just pull it back to our boat. Everyone's gonna know it was us. We feel like idiots. That's when, uh, old Taylor Morris came in to play. He decided he was gonna go out and try and wrangle his snake. Basically, he's walking out in the water. Everyone's screaming at him, get away from it, don't do it, man. Don't do it, it's gonna bite you. He's out there doing this number in front of all these people. All of a sudden, he dives on it, goes under, everyone's cheering, he's like, comes up with it and he's got it, and he's like, wrestling it, and goes back under the water. All of a sudden, he bursts out of the water and he ties the snake in a knot, throws it over his shoulder, <laughs> and comes walking back to the boat. Everyone erupted. Everyone's like, oh, God. People were coming up to our boat nonstop from there, and we were kings of Crab Island. When we were in Spain, I paid him two euros to wear one of my sister's dresses down in public, and he was, he was loving the idea. Locals thought we were crazy. My favorite memories of Taylor are spring break trips, packed in the Beauville like sardines, getting lost in the South Carolina mountains, and living together in Franklin House summer after we graduated. Him and Josiah would always convince me that we needed to build my bike into a moped with my dad's weed whacker engines. So we probably ruined about five weed whacker engines of my dad's trying to weld them to bicycles. Taylor would have me come down to his house with the engine. So I had to bike over to his house, a bike a mile down the road, with an engine in my backpack. Get there, his dog would chase me off the driveway. I was scared of his dog. I'd bike home, call him from the landline, be like, why were you outside? He'll tell me he'd be outside. I'd bike over there again. He wasn't outside, his dog was though. So then I'd bike back. Same shit happened. Eventually I got over there. He tried welding the thing to my bike. It just like burnt through all the bike parts and we never really were successful. All of the romantic things he would do, he really was. I mean, he was a tough guy. I don't even know if I would call him a tough guy on the outside. Yeah, he liked to do tough things, like shoot and all the stuff the Navy let him do, but he was a softy, big softy. He would always play in like really romantic things, like, and they were just sometimes cheesy and corny, but they're all, I loved them all. And they're all unique, like one time he left a note on my window after work. So when I got off, it said, interested in a lover's picnic call if you're interested so i called him and he told me where to go he had a whole one of those red and white checkered blankets set up and a whole picnic sack full of just rotisserie chicken cheese and crackers those little like footprint little plastic bottles of wine dessert and stuff and he wouldn't show me any of the stuff he brought i kept trying to look in the bag and he's like no 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 you have to wait till the next course you have to wait till the next course to see what you have you have to wait till the next one it was right by this beach water kind of thing lake i guess it would be more of it was just you know simple nothing crazy i mean we weren't much of a gift kind of couple i would love those things tenfold over a new necklace or a ring and he knew that 
Instead of getting me flowers, anyone can go to the store and buy a dozen roses. But he would sometimes probably pick them out of people's yards, so sorry about that. But would handpick some and put them under my windshield wiper or leave them on the kitchen table because he went to work first. I don't know, to me, I guess that just, I would, I like that. All of those in Cedar Falls who followed his wrestling career. In the very last match of the day at uh, Substate Wrestling Tournament, Taylor was uh, paired with a, an opponent that was probably about 10, 12 inches taller than he was, but Taylor was really scrappy and, and very good, held his own. The match went into double overtime, it was. It was, and he was down for the last uh, takedown, and uh, somehow or other, this kid was able to get an escape. And while the kid was prancing around the mat after his win, Taylor was standing in the middle of the mat with his hand outstretched, waiting to congratulate his opponent. And I, it's a great story. If we weren't playing sports, we spent a lot of time as youngins at your parents' house, running amok, causing all kinds of trouble. We'd take those four-wheelers out, we'd sled around on those, and we'd run into your barn and warm up, and then we'd run back out there and do it again. And I'd always come over for your Super Bowl parties, and we'd hang out outside on the, your snow hill and play King of the Hill, and then we'd rush inside. It'd be freezing cold, so we'd have to sit by the fire and warm up, and we'd have food. We'd watch the rest of the game. Always great memory. We taught Sunday school together at NAS, so that was tons of fun. We even had our own little African child, Denomini, who we supported all through high school, and then um, we gave him away in college <laughs> at some point. Our senior keg night when the cops came, and it was freezing cold rain, and you, Twido, and myself ran to the woods with a couple of girls, including Danielle, and you had the ingenious idea to pee on ourselves to keep us warm so we could stay in the woods and hide from the cops longer. We didn't want to get caught because we had a district final soccer game the next day, so we hid in the woods for hours and hours trying to figure out how to get around these cops. Never got caught. Went to school the next day and able to play in the soccer game and on to state. In the first round of state, we got scored on with two minutes left in the game. We we're gonna lose. I remember we always said if we we're gonna lose, we're gonna go out our way. We're gonna get cards. And I remember kicking a kid in the back of the leg, getting a yellow card and sent off. And then you and Twato, like 15 seconds later, closed line a dude. I got two red cards and sent off. So not very, not very sportsmanlike, but we did it our way. And then we were thinking about rollerblading down at the roller drum, where we'd hang out with all the pretty much dirty kids that would smoke and. <laughs> We thought we were cool too. Did but... he almost get beat up too? Oh no, yeah. And yeah. Neil came and saved you. Yeah. That was that a really was fun funny. <laughs> <laughs> Probably when him and I first met in uh, kindergarten, pre-kindergarten, whatever they called it at Price Lab. I asked him if he wanted to play with me and he totally turned me down to, to play with this kid, Owen. I go, hey kid, you wanna play with me? He just goes, no, I'm playing with this kid. And uh, that's my first memory of Taylor. And One of the last summer nights before our senior year of high school, he and I were planning this big attack on a group of our friends, a group of girls. We were walking to our car and we both took steps into huge piles of horse manure though, that the girls had put out there for us. Uh, we knew we couldn't let the girls win, so we went back to their house and told them that we missed the horse manure, we saw it before we stepped in it, and that we were actually smarter than they were. Taylor calls me up one night, we were probably 15 years old, didn't have licenses, and Taylor would always ride his four-wheeler back and forth between our houses, and, and we'd hang out that way, but he called me one night and said, hey, meet me outside in five minutes, and didn't tell me what it was for, of course, and, and I didn't think anything of it. Sure enough, after five minutes, I go out, and of course, he's not there on time like he says he was going to be. So I wait a couple more minutes, and eventually I hear something on the highway coming down the road, just flying down the road out at me. Can't tell what it is. I see headlights. Sure enough, the lights turn up my street and pull up my driveway and into my driveway and stops. And at first, I had no idea what it was, but after I looked at it, it was basically Taylor taking Leah Hannes' rolled Honda Civic, taking the top off, take the windshield out, took all the doors out, was sitting in the car with his shirt off. He had his flannel rabbit skin little earmuff hat on, snowboarding goggles, and all he says is, get in, we're going for a ride. And that's Taylor. Taylor's affected my life in 
a million ways. Like he's taught me to live my life like it's my last and to be bigger than bigger than I am and chase my dreams. He's gone above and beyond. It's unreal seeing his success. The way he loves Danielle and the way they are together, I hope I have that someday when I'm done acting like I'm a musician. You affected my life by just showing how passionate and full of life you are. You're always looking for happiness in life and how to make things better and the adventure that life brings. I know that's something I've always looked up to you for. Taylor always has been one of my favorite people to be around just because he just, you just can't be around him and not like get excited about everything. All the love and the care you give to people and just your passion for life is just amazing and it's something that we really look up to and you know, something that I aspire to have. Just your creativity and how you're always trying to think outside the box and really, we care about you. He taught me everything, uh, hard work, determination, most of all, how to be a leader. Um, I can definitely say that without Taylor, I wouldn't be the same person I am today. Taylor not only affected my life, but Taylor was and is part of my life. Taylor is a huge influence on uh, myself and Lamb. I've always looked up to him. He's probably gonna want to kick our asses for saying this or talking like this, having this uh, chick flip moment. Don't attack us, all right, Taylor. But uh, you know, I have always looked up to him. Pretty much tried to be like him. He's probably one of the best dudes I've ever met in my entire life. Taylor has affected my life in a lot of positive ways. You know, I've never had somebody like that who's constantly motivating me. I've never had such a good role model. He just really has never doubted me. He's never, you know, strayed away from me. Anytime I start to stray away, he's kind of brought me back into where I should be and he's never really left my back for anything and you know having that is it's the best thing a friend could ever ask for. The way you live your life and the way you treat people so much respect and love such a great example of what I hope to someday live up to. I visited him in Coronado during his Navy SEALs training and, and that was the first time I think that I saw somebody so passionate about what they were doing it really impacted me and yeah. Hi Taylor, it's us, your German family. We're all very touched by what happened and we're thinking of you all the time. Uh, we're amazed by your strength and your determination. By the way, nice beard. P has affected my life by being the best influence ever. Whenever I need something, he always helps me no matter what, hap what the situation is. He's a good person and couldn't ask for a better brother. He's shown me that, you know, life has no limits. I can't tell you how many nights we had together, all of us had together, where it was, oh, you know, what a fun night, let's go home and go to bed. Or we could slap on a whole entire black outfit and go sneak into someone's house, take slash borrow something. There's just never a dull moment around Taylor. I remember Taylor Morris sneaking in to the girls' houses, cutting the power to the house so we could all sneak into the house and proceed to water balloon and take their purses and fill them with crickets and whatever else we could find. I'd probably have to say the biggest effect he had on it would probably be me out being here in the Gulf of Mexico. I don't think I could have done it. You know, Taylor went to the Navy. He did his own thing. He inspired me to be out. I figured, hell, I'd give it a shot. And I'm now I made it out here just because of Taylor. You know, every time he comes home, he's this He's this glue to our group of friends that everyone kind of unites when, when he's around. Everyone wants to be around him. He's just got an infectious personality that uh, everyone has a good time when they're hanging around Taylor. What Taylor has taught you in life, and I'm for sure going to have to say mowing the lawn. You can ask mom and dad about how many times they made me mow the lawn this week, but um, look at it. I mean, that is a nice lawn, courtesy of Taylor Morris. He knew the... He knew... To his core, he knew right and wrong. He's an amazing person inside and out, and he made me strive to be a better person every day, and still does. I mean, look at him now. I think he's the only one that isn't that hasn't cried or hasn't been mad about this situation. He has only been positive. It has only been determined. So still to this day, I strive to be a better person because of him. Taylor gets home. First thing I want to do is hug, give him a hug, and I probably won't let him go. <laughs> well, you gotta let him go a little bit. <laughs> Share him around. But uh, <laughs> we are so looking forward to Taylor coming home, yeah. so we can see him and yeah. be with him. Also, Taylor, I'm going to make a freezer of homemade ice cream for you, and I'm going to fix up some hot applesauce for topping. And I will help you eat it. <laughs> One thing I'm going to do to you, Taylor Morris, when you get home, besides give you a hug and a kiss on the cheek, of course, I'll probably just run my hands through that beard, you burly man. I want to go to his house with everybody, build a 
fucking huge bonfire. Top shit, bigger than anything we've ever created. Burn the hell out of that and give you a huge ass hug because I just want to hug the shit out of you. We gon' hug, brother. We gon' hug. Um, our group of friends is, are, we're all huggers. I have a tendency to kind of rub my beard into each other's necks. It just kind of happens. I think Taylor is one of the few people that embraces it and enjoys. At least he acts like he enjoys my beard rubbing on his neck. I plan to do that. Build a big bonfire with him, just like we used to do in high school, just like we've done every time that he's come home. Taylor gets home, the first thing we are going to do is I'm going to buy the biggest burritos that Pablo's ever made, and we're going to eat Pablo's burritos. Getting all the guys together, we're going to go to Pablo's, and we're all going to get burritos. We're going to sit around a fire and have a couple cold ones. And we talked about a couple days before you got hurt that you wanted to start an empire here in Cedar Falls. I don't know how we're going to do it, but I guarantee you, man, we're going to do it. All of us guys, we're gonna get into this, and we're gonna we're gonna start a freaking empire here. I just want to chill. Uh, I mean, I can sit in the family room, do nothing for hours, and, and just have a good time. But I just want to hang out with my bro. That's what I want to do when he gets home. We will have matching beards together and have a few beers with him because we're Morris's and we can we can put that shit away. He knows it. When you get home, I can't wait to see you. I can't wait to talk to you. I can't wait to hug you. I just can't wait to see you. You're gonna come back and we're gonna have great times. You've also been learning how to use that GPS probably a hell of a lot better than we did in South Carolina. So I wanna get back out there and go looking for waterfalls. I'm gonna come talk to you, I'm gonna give you a big ass hug. <laughs> and I'm just gonna hang out, man. I can't wait. I wanna hug him, I wanna cry with him, I wanna laugh with him, I wanna drink with him, I wanna eat with him, I wanna talk with him, I wanna walk with him, I wanna run with him, I wanna take trips with him. But really more than anything else, I just wanna be there for him. I'm really happy to hear that you're doing good, and we love you, and we miss you. You know, we're all here for you. This is a hard time for everybody, but, you know, our group of friends isn't like any other group of friends you'll ever meet. But right now, you know, we have a brother that's down. Everyone's always here for you. We're, we're here, we're looking out for you. I just want to let you know that we all love you, and we can't wait to see you at home. Taylor, I can't wait to see you. Stay strong your road to recovery, and love you, brother. We're so proud of you and we're so excited for how far you've come and we cannot wait to see you. Hang in there. We love you. Danielle, you're so strong. Hang in there and we love you both. We'll see you soon. Taylor, love you man. Can't wait till you get home. See ya soon, I guess, hopefully. And don't stop being unstoppable. And yes, I just read this off a sheet. Peace! I just want to say I love you man. All of us guys do. We're praying for you and we're pulling for you. Can't wait to see you. Be with you every step of the way. Every step of the way through this. He's uh, really been better looking, better fighter, and a better lover. Love you, buddy. I love you too, brother. Can't wait to uh, get up there and see you again this weekend. You know, pretty much, we know it's a long road we got ahead of us, but we'll, uh, we're gonna be there every step of the way. I always got your back. We got it. We won't stop. I've been wearing this for like five years. Ain't gonna stop now. At some point, I'm coming to Maryland. We, you know, we all want to be chilling in the parking lot drinking beers and all that but we can't yet until we get permission we might just go anyway but we'll see you soon man we love you taylor i just want to let you know that i love you man thinking about you a lot i think you got some of the best friends and family in the entire world and we're gonna be with you and for you to the end and man i got big plans for us you're not gonna get out of them that easy we just wish you godspeed and um, we're keeping you in our prayers and we love you i uh, can't wait to have you own brother and just know that I love you and we all love you back home. I love you. I'm looking forward to seeing you. I know that we have some big things ahead of us, but we can get through them together. Come home quickly and I'll see you again soon. I'm praying for you every day. God says that he doesn't give us anything that we can't handle through him. So that must mean that you're a pretty badass dude. Seeing uh, the situation you're in and the obstacles that you're about to overcome. I love you and I'll be seeing you soon. Take care, buddy. Love you so much. Hope to see you soon. Bye, Taylor. It's going to be different at first, but, dude, it's going to be good. I can't wait to see you. I absolutely cannot wait to see you. Stay strong. We'll be here. I love you. Can't wait to see you. And I just want you to know I'm here for you every step of the way. Take it easy, bud. We'll see you in no time, man. We'll see you. We'll see you soon. Well, final words, Taylor, dude. Hang in there, buddy. We're here for you, you know. Everybody's here for you. We all love you. I can't wait to see you when you get back home. Taylor, we hope that when you're getting better and you're back home, that all of us can come over to Iowa to visit you. And, um, yeah, it would be great to continue our nightly adventures. Talking about, like, having fun and drinking beer. It would be very good to see you again and 
would be great to meet you then, yeah. Just thinking of you, man. I can't wait to hang out with you. Just grow out again like normal. Go ahead with the next uh, step of life and keep moving forward. Do it with you, man. See ya. Just, I, I guess, just I love you, Taylor. And I love you. We love you. But I love you. We all, I love you. I love you, buddy. We all love you. We love you. We love you. Love you, man. Love you so much. I love you too, brother. I love you. We love you. I love you, man. I love you, Taylor. Love you, man. We all love you. I love you, man. Love you, brother. I love you, man. I love everything about you. And it will get better. You already know that. I don't even know why I'm telling you. You know that. But you can say that without crying. But I love you. I believe Jehovah Jireh.